Recently I figured out how to mod Battle for Bikini Bottom and maybe older games using various tools. So this series is about how I do it and what I know so far. As I learn more, I'll update and add new episodes. And as people figure out more from these episodes, I'll also you know, report their discoveries and how they do stuff. But for now, I'll show you everything I know about modding and how to get started. So begin by downloading all of the files I have in the description of the video. Once you have them all installed, just put them on your desktop like I have them here. It's a bunch of WinRAR zip files. And you're also going to want to install Dolphin. It's like a GameCube emulator. It makes it a lot easier. You don't need to use it. Um, but I would definitely recommend using it. It makes it so much easier. So once you do that, just come back here and we'll begin modding. So start off, we're going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it um, BFBB mod. And if we open up the new folder, it's going to be empty, obviously, but we want to extract all of the files that you downloaded into this new folder one by one. So GameCube Rebuilder, the magic um, TDX file. This is the ISO. Um, you don't have to use the install I put in the description. You could use, you know, any ISO file you download off the internet from other websites. It's fine. This one worked for me though. So if you want to use exactly what I'm using, just to make sure that if you have a problem later, that's not the reason, then go ahead and download that. And there you go. So we have all of the files now in this folder. So we're going to begin by actually getting the game files extracted. So to do that, we're going to make another new folder. And I'm going to call this um, game files. And we're going to open up Dolphin now. So my Dolphin looks a little bit different than yours probably, unless you also were playing around with like memory and breakpoints and other parts of the GameCube games, but don't worry about it, we're not actually going to use any of this. Basically we're just going to right click here, we should be able to right click here. Well we can't right click there, so what we're trying to do though is open up the ISO file. So go to the root of where all of your files are basically. I know mine's under Documents ISO, so wherever your ISO files go to normally. And then we're going to take the SpongeBob SquarePants ISO and move it into here. And if we come back to Dolphin, um, reopen it, we'll have that here now. So normally if you have already a game here, you can just right click the game, press Open Containing Folder, and that's how to get here a little bit quicker. Um, I guess you can't do it if there's nothing here already, which is kind of dumb. Whatever. Uh, now we're going to actually extract the game file. So right click on the game when it's in here, go to properties, go to file system, and here are all of the game files. Please note that this is not actually the entire contents of the disk. These are just the game files of the disk. There's some protected files that aren't showing up right now, but we don't care. We just want to mod the game itself. We don't care about, you know, really root level files that we don't need to touch. So right click on the little disk icon up here and do extract all files. And this is my my hack I made earlier, so we're going to ignore that. We're going into BFBB mod and we're going to go to that folder we made earlier called game files and we're going to press select folder. Now it should begin extracting every file from the game. Okay, now that that's done, we need to actually extract other stuff too. So right click and now choose extract app loader and we're going to put it into the same game files folder as before. So just select folder, it will instantly extract it. Extract DOL, this is your boot.dll. Once again, put it in the same exact folder. Actually don't put it in the same folder, put it in your root folder, put it in the BFBB mod folder. If you already did that, sorry. Um, put it in the, the main folder. So now we have at least your folder should look like this. You have a boot.dol, you have game files where you have everything in here, including your app loader, and it's pretty cool. So this is actually the contents of the game. You can actually start reading stuff now. So it's pretty obvious what all this stuff is. B1 is the first boss, and this is all the contents of the Sandy boss. But what good is it in these nice, compressed, unmodifiable folders? It's no good. Other than the fact that you could change the warps around a little bit, these compressed protected SQL files are basically useless. 
and believe it or not the files that we're going to be targeting today are the hop files um, hip files you can also target but we're going to stick with hop today maybe we'll do hip um, but basically you have everything good to go for the most part we're going to set up now our um, our path so if you go over to paths the dvd root file is where you want to choose go to the um, the bfb mod folder we made this is where you're going to choose the actual game file content so select folder when you're on game files the app loader if you think about it for a second is obviously the app loader we extracted so just go to game files scroll down choose the app loader and you're done that's all you need to do dvd root app loader done so press ok now if we press open here we're actually going to run this because this is the unmodified compact iso if you press open up here we can actually go to the bfp mod choose the boot.dol and now it's going to run the game but please note that it's not actually running um, the usual i guess compressed iso file it's running the folders this is what we're running right now we're inside here so anything we modify here we can instantly play by just just doing what we just did and that's like really useful for when you're making mods we can instantly test our game so we're gonna close that up so pretty much where we can edit these now and when we play what we just did so if you just go to here my dolphin crashed great if you just go to open and then choose the boot.dol we're gonna just play whatever's in here so let's get started with some easy modifications and maybe um, I'll do an episode for each type of modification that I figured out so far so the easiest thing to do right now is to right click on SB and edit it with notepad plus plus I'm not sure if regular notepad will work well but any any good like text editor should work I know notepad plus plus works really well um, the one update all right so ignore that so this is what it looks like once you open it and this is the easiest way to mod the game if you don't want to get too in depth and you just want to have fun and like fuck around with random settings this is your best bet so if we go all the way up to here we'll start off with a few things here the boot hip file doesn't really need to be touched but this is um this is the original like level you boot to when you press new game um so you could set this to whatever you want basically and HB00 is the hub level, and it's the scene 00 in the hub level. I'll show you what that means. If we're inside the actual game files here, you'll see all these, these things are made up of two letters. And each file contains a level. So HB is, stands for hub. And then we have HB00, which is actually the prologue of the game. That's like when you start it up, you get that intro cutscene where um, you know SpongeBob puts the robot in the shell and shakes it around. And then the robots like appear or whatever. That's what that is. The actual pineapple itself is its own level here. You get teleported to from the prologue. So the prologue actually sends you to, to hub underscore, I mean hub02. So you'll see it's HB00. That's the hop file we're being sent to, or hip file. So you can change this to whatever you want. You can make it be HP01, right? And if we change that, if we save this, it will teleport you to um, the main hub by default when you press new game. So that's like your first modification. Good job, you made your first mod. Um, show menu on boot, these are booleans here. So zero would be false, one would be true. Show menu on boot, if you set to zero, is actually gonna skip the entire like opening cutscenes and credits and whatever the hell, all the, the logos. So that's really good for if you're testing the game you wanna get in really quick, you can set that to zero. And we'll see that difference when we actually start the game up. Can the player take damage? Um, this one's actually commented nicely. It's pretty obvious, though, that zero is no, he can't. One is yes, he can. Because, once again, these are Boolean values. Zero is, is false. One is true. And these are um, actually our, our time hit. I mean, these are, I'm sorry, these are like the knockback values. I mean, these are the delay timers. So these these are actually... Uh, your the, the amount of time after you get hit that you're invincible so if I set this to a really low value Spongebob can just continually be hit like he has no 
invincibility whatsoever. And I actually did this in my mod to make it a lot harder. And there's a lot of shit in here you can modify. There's all sorts of things. Um, so if we go down to here, these are all the warps here. So various warps work as this. If you warp to the first spatula in the first area, that will warp you to the hub underscore one or hub zero one, which we know is the main hub. And then we have these other ones here, which warp you to different areas. And that's how each one works. Like rock bottom, the first four spatulas teleport you to the zero one area. This one teleports you to the zero two area, which is the museum. And the last ones teleport you to the zero three area. So you can actually change the warps. Many of you that have watched my mod would know that every single warp sends you to the first area. And the way I did that was just replacing every single one with a zero, zero or a zero, one. And then just doing that all across the board. Like you could change this G J F jellyfish fields to HB. And now this is technically all hub warps. So you can really mess with the warps that way, your warp menu. And it's, it's very confusing and weird, but you can do that. And that's something, um, something important. If you're making a mod and you don't want people to be able to warp to certain areas, you can actually remove warps from the game or add warps to the game. So it's very, very useful. These are all the camera settings. I wouldn't personally mess with these unless you really don't like the camera in the game, but I think it's, it's very well done. This is the minimum amount of time before you can skip a cutscene. I wish you could set this to zero, but the way they programmed it, one is the lowest time. So I'm just gonna leave it at one because unless you wanna force people to watch cutscenes in your mod, go ahead and amp that number up and they won't be able to skip it. These are the values of the shiny objects. I'm not sure if this actually works though. My, my history of testing it doesn't actually change the value of them. These are the values of the combos. I'm, I'm not sure if these are multipliers or how these work exactly. But you can mess around with those if you want. This is pretty self-explanatory. This is the time it takes to bash, the delay between when you actually press the button to when you actually bash. So in my mod, I, I actually made this delay um, very low. So you instantly bash after pressing the button. It's really good and responsive. I like that. The height of the bash, you can make this like absolutely insane, like 15. And that's really fun. Um, the bounce speed, I'm not sure if this actually affects your bounce speed. I've tried it before. It doesn't seem to do anything. And um, these are all sandy settings. These are the bubble bowl settings. These are fun to mess with too. Like launch velocity. Velocity up is actually interesting. You can actually set an upward velocity for the bubble bowl. I thought that was really cool. And these are all your slide settings. I tend to find that these didn't work either. I was messing with them for a while, but you mean go ahead and try them out. Maybe you'll find something I didn't find. The gravity for all the characters is how fast they accelerate towards the ground. Um, these are really fun to mess with. The carrying settings. So these are all Patrick's carrying settings. You could do all sorts of weird stuff with it. Um, make them throw really far, be able to pick up from a really far distance. Those are a lot of fun. Oh, the, the bounce is great too. So in my mod, I set the bounce to one. So the, the fruit just won't stop bouncing. Once you throw it, it just bounces all over the place. That's a really cool setting. It's like a bouncy ball. These are these are actually really interesting. Um, they remind me of the Scooby-Doo game, actually. Like the various things you pick up. Because this, this Battle for Bikini Bottom was actually built over the Scooby-Doo game to save time. It's very interesting. You'll see a lot of like weird Scooby-Doo settings in here that don't make any sense. Um, also, SpongeBob's model is called his ass for his butt. I thought that was funny too. Is there's airborne parameters? Um, here's his movement speed stuff. So this stuff's really fun to mess with. This is his sneak speed on the very left. This is his walk speed, and this is his run speed. So if he says run speed to 10, he's going to go like super fast when you run. He says sneak speed to, I mean his walk speed to 1, he's going to go super slow when you walk. Interesting thing to point out is as you adjust these settings, it actually adjusts his animation so he walks faster. These are the cruise bubble settings. You can make the cruise bubble, you know, various different modifications. You can make it really fast, really slow, whatever you want to do with it. Patrick's move speed settings. 
same thing as SpongeBob's. You have his sneak speed, his move speed, his walk speed. But SpongeBob Patrick doesn't actually sneak, so I'm guessing this value is just like when you hold down the analog really slightly. It's just gonna like interplay between these numbers. And this is all commented out because this is definitely like this is interesting. Like SpongeBob's bungee dive. I don't know why this is commented out. I guess they don't want to edit this stuff from here. Um, out of bounds drop fade. Like there's some weird stuff here. Like they don't. You're not allowed to edit it here because they're commented out. But at the same time, it makes you wonder like why they commented it out. Maybe it's just like something that they ended up setting in the code for good. Not sure what this stuff does down here. Wouldn't mess with it. Um, and I mean that's really it. It's a great file to mess with if you're just trying to have fun and totally change the game. Because these, like, these values are pretty universal. And I'll get to why it's good to have universal stuff later. But for now, we can actually test out our mod. So we save the file. Now we can go to open. Open the boot. Wait for it to start up. All right, so we start off with the usual intro scene right there. And after the loading screen now, should notice something weird. You go right into the game. So if you remember correctly, we actually change the values so that way we skip all the intro menu scenes. Um, for some reason my controller is not set up. So, I guess we don't know how to set up a controller in Dolphin. Show you how to do that. So, I might not might not be plugged in. This is a little unprofessional. Yeah, my controller's not plugged in. There we go. That's how you set up a controller. Okay, so we set the, the boot scene like earlier, set it to HP01, so it sent us to HP01, like we specified, HP01 is the hub all exits. This is the hub all exits file, which is this world, and our movement speed is absolutely insane, like we set. Our jump isn't any higher, we didn't set that, um, but if we sneak or walk, if we can even get one out, you'll see that we go really slow extremely slow but when we when we run we go so much faster our bash boost is absolutely ridiculous because that's what we set it to <laughs> it's actually really fun to watch I was originally going to release the mod that I made with like crazy bash boost and stuff like that but it's just it's just a little too much <laughs> um, so there's actually a lot more we can do this is just like really surface level modifying. We didn't even get into using any of the modding tools that I released in those downloads. But the next episode, we're gonna start messing with other stuff. And that's when it's gonna get really fun. So thanks for watching the first episode and tune into the next one to learn how to modify this game even deeper.